joke all the time about people that dream of being a firefighter. And I, I never did, because I always wanted to be a Marine. I mean, that's what I, and then I was a Marine and I'm still a Marine. But then when I got here, it's like, I just put my, my trust into something higher, I guess you could say, and it put me where I needed to be. And, and I truly believe that. Uh, and that's when I came here in 02, I had a chief that I know there's no way that I was probably should have been picked or I'm, that's my opinion. I mean, I was older. I was 32 when I started, a bunch of younger people. But my chief, I think, saw something in me and he took a chance. And I told him, I said, you know, I mean, this is, I'll only get better. And, and that was has always been my, my goal, is he took a chance in me. And when he did it, I mean, I love it. I, I literally love it. Thumbing back through the files of his own personal history, he sees a young man thinking about a career. He entered the late entry program with the United States Marine Corps, staying there for six years entering Desert Storm. And then it was time to get a job. He knew that he might want to do something in service. It's always been a love to serve, he says. So he tried to pursue law enforcement, but that just didn't work out. He later interviewed at the Glasgow Fire Department, and he's been there for 20 years, climbing up the ladder of the varying ranks, and one, well, he wasn't too fond of it, and that was the rank of sergeant. Was not my cup of tea. Not where I wanted to be, you know. It was great till you got there and everything happened. Then your job was over and you're just kind of standing by the truck. And it just wasn't where I wanted to be. So I promoted up to lieutenant. And once again, the ultimate dream job. Uh, I got to be in charge of my four people on my truck, myself and three others. Uh, I got to lead. I got to kind of set the pace. And I always got to go in just like the firefighter. But now I had enough time and rank that I didn't have all the stuff that firefighters have to do. I didn't have to do all that. Now I could do it if I chose to, which a lot of times I did, but you didn't have to. I'm like, this has got to be the greatest ever, you know? And I thought, this is where I'm going to stay. I said, there is no way that I'll go to the office. No way. I said, why don't you go to the office? I said, you ain't going to get me up in the office. I said, we work 24 on, 48 off now. I said, I love my two days off. And nothing but headaches up there. No, I'm not going to the office. Now I'm in the office. Before he climbed up that ladder of success, he was at the bottom with a hose. Every firefighter remembers their first fire. And I'll never forget that, I mean, everybody wanted to go in with you that time. I had the nozzle and I, and I finally just held it so nobody would take my nozzle. So this is mine and you're not getting my nozzle today. So I'm waiting at the door for him to come and you know, here he comes around the corner and everybody's wanting to go in with me. I said, no, I gotta wait for my partner. I gotta wait, you know, I was just that new guy. You gotta wait for your partner. You can't, you know, doing what they're just told. And here he gets there and he jumps in behind me and here we go. Inside and we're going in, you can't see anything and it's black smoke everywhere and it's hot. And you're like, I cannot see nothing. I see we've done all this training, that's right. but. I thought, how in the world am I gonna know what to put out? So we finally keep going and keep going, it gets hotter, and then you get to the fire, and it's like, oh, that's how you can put it out because there's no smoke in that room. Now here we are and it's all fire, and I spray the water, and it's over. I'm like, wow, that didn't last long. And that was it. But it was just like, that was pretty awesome. Burning buildings and adrenaline rushes may be exciting, but it's the side gig that he's involved in that's really the hot topic. I don't care. You know how many spaces. So the chief of the fire department is going to help me pick out a dress, right? Hey, I got it. I got this. Yep, we can't make this up. You heard that right. It's a family affair, too. When he's not in the fire truck, you may just catch him driving around with his mother-in-law there in the fancy fashion truck instead. And guess what? There's no shame in this fire chief's game. My wife would joke and she'll say, can I help you? No, I'm, I'm here to see your husband. You know, she's like, really? Really? Yeah, he, he said he'd help me. He helped me with this other one and it's been awesome. 
So I'm just gonna stick with him. So, so my daughter comes up and works. And so that's how we've got her through help put her through college. Now we've got, after this year, one more year of law school. So, but yeah, I'm the fire chief that sells swing dresses on the side. But putting jokes aside, firefighters are a family, one that forms quickly. And it's not only the firefighters that grow up at the department. My daughter is getting married in May. She asked me about giving her a ride and granny or something to her wedding. And it kind of hit me on that moment that my daughter grew up here and I never did really think about it because she was about two when I started. And you don't think about everybody else that's been in your life during the 20 years. The stuff my wife's had to put up with. And my daughter's been over here. She sprayed the square down for the orchestra when she was little. I got pictures of her. I mean, you know, and now she's in law school. And I'm like, this really touched more than just me. This fire chief is much more than his title. In fact, he's a husband, a father, a veteran, and a well-rounded community member. He holds a lot of information in his arsenal, but he's quick to give it away too. He says one piece of advice he gives. Try to find that happy medium, because you, you gotta make money. And like we talked about, it makes the world go round. But you don't wanna spend your entire life being miserable. If you can find something that sustains you and you love, you'll be rich every day. You know, just the way it is, simple as that. This is William Rock, and this has been Meet My Neighbor.